Hello and welcome to the Elder Scrolls Online Unraveled, a series of short videos covering some of the mechanics from the upcoming game Elder Scrolls Online that are causing the most questions and confusion out there. For this first episode, I'd like to take a look at a basic question, but one which gets asked pretty often. What determines the damage I do with my abilities? Well, there are three factors at play here, the first of which I'm going to call the damage factor. So for each ability, we're going to take either your spell damage or your weapon damage and use that to determine the overall damage the ability does. The second factor I'm going to call the stat factor. And again, for each ability, either your maximum magicka or your maximum stamina is going to be used to determine how much damage you do with that ability overall. The third factor is the smallest of the, of the three, but it still does play a role, and that is the rank factor. Each of your abilities will have a rank from one to four. As you use the abilities and earn experience, your abilities will rank up, and as they rank up, they will do more damage than they did before. So to start off, the first factor, damage factor. Any ability found in one of these lines here, underneath the weapon category, these are all going to use the weapon damage to determine how much they do. It doesn't matter if it's a two-handed sword attack or if it's a staff firing a fireball. They're both going to use weapon damage, even though the destruction staff abilities look like spells, they're driven by weapon damage. For spell damage, that's everything except for your weapons. So your class abilities will all use spell damage. Your world abilities, your guild abilities, everything else other than your weapons is going to use spell damage to determine how much it's doing. And we're going to show that by doing a little bit of a test here. I have two weapons on here. Um, the first weapon set is a healing staff with 107 damage. The second weapon set is a lowly iron axe with 10 damage. And as I switch between them, you'll see my weapon damage change on my character sheet. It's 109 right now with that staff. And it goes to 10 with the axe. Okay. So we'll take a look now at how much damage these abilities are using. Now these first three abilities all come from a weapon line. It's a sword attack, a destruction staff, and a restoration staff. These last three abilities are spells from non-weapon lines. So as we change our, our weapon from the 107 damage staff to the 10 damage axe, we're, we're expecting to see this damage on this ability go down. And yes, here we go. It did go down, as expected. Our destruction staff, even though it's using magic and is, is a fire ring, um, it's, it's still going to go down based upon the damage of the weapon that I'm using. Same with the heal. Lower damage weapon, lower amount of heals. These last three class abilities, they are not affected at all by your weapon damage. The fighter's guild ability here, also not affected. And this ultimate from the vampire line, which is uh, under the world skills, also not affected by weapon damage. So we've shown that weapon damage affects these weapon abilities, but does not affect the non-weapon abilities. Oh, how do we how do we go ahead but and show that the spell damage is what affects these? Well, I have a, an amulet which grants me seven additional spell damage, and I can equip that and go from 80 spell damage to 87, and unequip it again. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look and see what our damage looks like with that equipped. Our puncture remains the same. Our elemental ring, even though it's kind of like a spell, is, has remained the same, as has the regeneration ability. Our dark flare, which is a spell from our class line, that has gone up from 456 up to 474. And our silver shards ability from the fighters guild also went up from 216 to 227. And lastly, this ultimate ability from the vampire line went up from 177 to 184. So. Spell damage affects these non-weapon abilities, 
and has no effect on the weapon abilities, even the ones that look like spells. So now a second factor we talked about. Stamina and Magicka. Any ability which uses stamina will have its damage increased by increasing your stamina. Any ability which is using Magicka will have its damage increased by increasing your maximum Magicka. What we're going to do here is take a look right now. We've been looking at numbers using my max Magicka of 1791 and my max stamina of 1166. I'm going to eat some grilled shank. It's going to increase my stamina by 306. Alrighty. So here we go, our max stamina now, 1490. Max magic has remained the same at 1791. Now let's take a look and see what damage we're looking at now. While Puncture has a stamina costing ability, we expect it to go up and, and it did from 193 to 219. Our other weapon abilities are both Magicka abilities and they did not change. 183 and 828. Our Dark Flare class ability co also cost Magicka. That did not change, stayed at 456. Our Friday's Guild ability here. Now this, this costs stamina, even though it's a spell, it does cost stamina, and as such, it was affected by that increase to our stamina. We went from 216 to 241. And lastly, the ultimate from the Vampire line was not affected. It remained at 177. Okay, and what we'll do now is we'll click off that increase max stamina buff, bring our stamina back down to normal, and then we will try some Imperial City Stew. Nom nom nom. Tasty. And now what we'll find is our max, max stamina stayed at 1166. Our max magic has gone up. Now it hasn't gone up by the full 306, which that stew was promising to raise it by, because we've reached the overcharge mark. And once we get to that point, any anything beyond that is subject to diminishing returns. But it has increased it by, you know, a couple hundred. So that, that's good enough for our test. So with this increased Magicka, we take a look at the Puncture, and it's doing the same, same damage as before we ate the food, uh, which is what we expect since it's a stamina, stamina costing ability. Our other weapon damage abilities here, the Elemental Ring and the Regeneration, although they're still using weapon damage, the, the damage has gone up based upon the increased Magicka. So we went from 183 to 196, for example, on the Ring, and from 828 to 888 on that Regeneration. Our class spell, Dark Flare, went up as expected from 456 to 484. And our Fighter's Guild ability, given that it uses stamina, has stayed the same at 216. So, that's to be expected. Now lastly, we take a look at our ultimate. Now, ultimates don't use either stamina or magicka, so they would seemingly not be affected by either. But the way they actually work is based upon the stat which affects the line they're in. So this is a vampire ultimate, and the vampire skills are all driven by magicka. They cost magicka to use, and magicka will increase their damage. So the ultimate ability from that line also has its damage affected by Magicka. Okay. So we'll get rid of that buff. And uh, that's about it. What I, I have here is a, uh, a sheet with, with the numbers on so you can take a look at it in case we went through them a little fast. Let me bring that up. And uh, while you're taking a look at that, I just want to thank you all for watching. I hope that it made sense. I hope that it explained some stuff. And um, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, then please do po uh, post in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, please click like or subscribe. Uh, that helps me, helps me know that I have people out there who are interested in finding out this kind of thing. I'd like to give a big thanks to Wicked, who created some add-ons which I was using to switch gear. 
Uh, he has some add-ons up at esoui.com. Wicked Framework and Wicked Outfitter were the ones I used today to be able to equip and unequip items. I'd also like to thank the Tamriel Foundry and the Game Mechanics Forum there. That's where we, there's a lot of discussion going on. I encourage every, anyone that hasn't been over there to check that website out, check out those forums, and uh, you find a lot of useful information there. And uh, I think that's about it. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care.